Hello, it's Paul Check, and welcome to my video blog for today. What day it is, nobody knows. Who cares? Hey, I was listening to Alan Watts give a great lecture, and he was talking about how a student asked a Zen master, Master, what is the most valuable thing in the world? And the master says, a dead cat. Why? Because a dead cat has no value unless you put a value on it. There's a deep meaning to that. What is the most valuable thing in the world? A dead cat. It means that the most valuable things in the world will be the memories and the experiences of you having a great time where there is no expectation, no pressure, no one critiquing you, what I call unbound play. Master, what's the most valuable thing in the world? A dead cat. Well, <laughs> most people don't pull their car over to pick up a dead cat and take it home and, you know, try to eat or do anything with it. So, paradoxically, the times that you really enjoy the most, most of you on the weekend, what do you do? Some of you sit around and watch football games or relax and play on your computer. But at large, most of these things have no real objective value and you're not getting a grade on how well you did on Nintendo or Street Fighter 2 or Ass Kicker 23 or whatever. It's just fun. Fun's healing. Not having to do things is healing. Do, 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 do makes Jack a very dull boy and Jill a very dull girl. So remember the most valuable thing in the world is a dead cat. <laughs> So get out there and have some unbound play. I love to play with rocks and move dirt around and draw and sing and rattle and make a complete ass out of myself that even the animals are entertained watching. That's how I know I'm having fun. They all come around and watch. Do some art, some dance. Get out there, move your pelvis, get a little Elvis going. Singing, even if you don't sound good, who gives a shit? I used to sing in the back of trucks with full of soldiers on our way out to do battle maneuvers. I used to sing with loggers and you know all sorts of people. I sing in the sauna with my friends and when we're exercising, hey, uh, remember, being happy may not make you sing, but singing makes you happy. Which means, once you know that, all you're going to do is sing if you're not feeling so ideal. And then you're willing to take responsibility for yourself. That's why I like to sing my four doctor songs. Dr. Happy is the dreamer. Dr. Happy is the dreamer. Dr. Happy is the dreamer, don't you know? Dr. Happy is the dreamer. Dr. Happy is the dreamer. Dr. Happy is the dreamer, don't you know? Dr. Happy sets your rhythms, and your rhythm sets your pressure, and your rhythms and your pressure make your flow, and your rhythms and your pressure make your flow, oh, oh, hey, so you see, singing can make you happy, and if you sing the right songs, it reminds you of who you really are and how to be that person. Walking or playing in nature, hey, go back to the Great Mother and see your roots, literally. Notice how the squirrels live. Look at how nature gets along. It's not a competitive ass-kicking process. There's a harmony out there. That's why you feel so good when you're out there. There's a natural harmony. We've gotten into this competition, dog-eat-dog, dog, uh, you know, false understanding of Darwin as a model where we need to heal from that. So go out and see who you really are. Your hobbies. Enjoy your hobby, but when you're doing your hobby, quit worrying about crap all the time. Turn the television off. If you're doing hobbies with the television on, you're just injecting all the stuff that kills your heart and soul and all the crap of the world that's mostly manufactured anyhow to keep you spending money you don't have. Do your hobby and play your favorite music. Shut the environment of the silliness of the world out so you can have some real peace time, a real peace point. Get away from it all. 
Okay? Let the world carry you for your unbound playtime. It really helps to remember that Mother Earth has been the home to many battles, many wars, many great acts of destruction, and many great acts of creation. And she can survive without us. If we dropped nuclear bombs all over this planet and killed everything on the surface of the Earth, she would just regenerate. She'd have a nice long restful sleep. All the kids would stop tearing the place up and things would just turn out to be beautiful. So she's cool with it. We have got to be the ones that give ourselves permission to let Mother Earth carry the weight of the story of the world because that's what she does. When you can trust that tomorrow the news will still be there, politicians will still be screwing each other, lawyers will still be ripping people off and saving people that are getting ripped off, doctors will still be operating on people, people will still be getting fat, they'll still be getting skinny, and everything in between. Once you can let the world carry that, you can let go of it all and really get into your play. And that, from my own experiences, when the most healing occurs, and every time you take a step into that and recover your child nature, you begin to realize how deeply trapped in programming and unnecessary beliefs and buzz we've gotten. And then you wake up and go, this is hilarious. This is actually quite hilarious. We have heaven right here under our feet, but we keep acting as though it's hell because we're pushing ourselves to be what everybody else wants us to be instead of what we really want to be. So today, be who you want to be. I'll be me, you'll be you. We've got lots of loving to do. Talk to you next time.